Yo, what's good? And welcome to another episode of the Amigo Experiment. Your son, Anthony Flo. Your son, Rick Diesel. Yo, today, man, we have an exclusive interview with this woman, man, that we've been trying to get one for the past, like, three, four years with this girl, man. Yo, con nosotros tenemos an Anna Mays. What's up? What's up? What's good? Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. What made you have to change your mind and finally come on down? Um, well, you know, I felt like I've been in, you know, the D.C. DMV area. I've been paying my dues for years. Mm -hmm. So I definitely wanted to take time to focus on me, my craft, and just, like, expand mm -hmm. before I come back and, like, actually have something to share. You know, something more, like... A little, little, something a little yeah. more personal, like, something mm -hmm. like... Don't forget to mention. Let's play, speak about that. I didn't minute, expect so. that. I didn't yeah. plan that one. Yeah, but <laughs> since we're there anyways, you know what I mean? You just dropped the record. Right you right just dropped the single as well. I've heard it being played on 95.5. Yo, big shout out to that man, DJ Bridge. Yes, you know what I mean? You. I should be playing the record out there, but talk to us about Don't forget to mention, man. So, um, yes, based on true um, story, according to the video. So. Yes, it's based on true events. Um, so... Don't forget to mention, well, for those who don't know, um, I've been in D.C. all my life, uh, but I moved to Texas probably around September. Yeah. September of 2021. And I was initially going to drop my EP Talk To You later in October. Okay. I had finished that project like a year ago, and it got put on hold due to unforeseen events. Um, so when I came back, you know, I took time to myself, and the first song that I wrote was Don't Forget to Mention, and it was basically you know, explaining my experience that I recently went through. And I had recently went through, okay, an abusive relationship. Yeah. Um, and I remember, fuck, I'm crying already. <laughs> so I was in, I think it was like probably like five days after I came back, I was just, I went to the park and I was in the car and I was just like, you know, skimming through beats. And I liked one and I just started writing to it. And it was writing about it was almost as if i was responding to him gotcha. you know i felt like he put he put me through a lot of things that i don't know it was hard for me to just share with anybody but i knew the only way that i knew how to like i didn't even tell my mom i didn't tell anybody so i knew the only way that i could express it was through song was through music and so it was literally just me writing it as if i was writing to him you know because I don't know if you guys know, but when I came back, he literally went all over social media and just slandered my name, like mm. entirely. And he was at it for like a good four days. Like he just wouldn't stop, he wouldn't stop, he wouldn't stop. So I felt like I couldn't say anything. And so writing that song was definitely like a song written to him. Like you're saying all these things about me, but don't forget to mention everything that you did to me. Thus the name, don't forget to mention. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, um, so I watched the, the video and it's such an impactful video. You went through such a tumultuous situation um, in that relationship. I know it affected you personally. Um, I actually saw the video with my sister oh, wow. and uh, we was watching it together because I wanted to see what her what the impact would be on her. Um, what kind of feedback did you get from that record from other girls or other women out there? I mean, honestly, I've received endless messages like from TikTok to IG, YouTube, everywhere. Just a bunch of females like telling me their story and thanking me for sharing mine and using my platform to speak for those that feel like they can't speak, mm -hmm. you know, to speak for those that feel alone and you know when they're going through it they feel crazy because that person can really get in your head and manipulate you and make you feel like this is normal yeah. you know like just misconstrue your whole reality of what love is supposed to be so I received a lot of messages from women just you know telling me their story reaching out for advice just thanking me you know and it was to be honest it was very very overwhelming it was very overwhelming for me because it breaks my heart to know how many women are out here, and not just women, but men too, yeah. but how many people are out here just going through these you know, abusive situ situations and nobody knows, and they just stay, and it just becomes a pattern, and they just, they never leave, and maybe they do leave, and they're able to tell their story, but some aren't, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. like, I was mentioning this earlier to you as well, like you made hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of records, and the transparency mm -hmm. in this particular record is something that really just yeah. surprised me, because like you, you hit very many, it wasn't just something that kind of tugged at your heart, but you you kind of tugged at everybody else's heart who's been through some stuff, you know what yeah. I mean? 
And just the fact that, you know, you're doing that, how do you feel to be kind of like this, uh, this adversary, this person who, because that's what you're going to convert to, you know, because yeah. especially the females that follow you in the DMV, they follow you. It's, it's hardcore, y'all. Yeah, I know. But it's like, it's like, you know, they all have a, a particular story and not just you. It's kind of about our culture is yeah. what I'm kind of going to. Mm -hmm. Like, you said it yourself. We've seen stuff happen. It's like a normality, right? Mm -hmm. But then when we realize, like, this shit ain't normal, man. It, yeah, you know what I mean? Because, like, abuse can be not just physical. It's, like, mental, yeah, physical, horrible, emotional, yo. And what moment is actually what took it? For you to write this um for me to write don't forget to mention it's crazy because when i came back i was gonna go back of course when i came back you know i was i was still like experiencing like that because it's kind of like a, an addiction you know yeah and i was like, experiencing those withdrawal feelings and i was gonna go back and I was on some, I'm gonna make sure he gets help and I'm gonna be there for him and support him, you know? But I think what helped me stay is the fact that I am I live in DC, you know? So it wasn't as simple as just, oh, I'm just gonna drive to your crib, you know? I have to take a whole fucking flight. So I stayed and I waited. And I waited it out to see if he would try to work it out, if he would change. And I think seeing how, as the days went by, he made it worse and worse and worse. And because I was removed from that situation mm -hmm. and I was like all the way in DC and seeing things from a different view, I was able to think clearly, a little bit more clearly and think that's not where I need to be. If he really loves me, he wouldn't do no things like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't, sure. you don't do that to somebody that you love. And so, that's what made me write the song because it's like if you're saying all these things about me well you know what get the record straight you know so that was for me you know what made me write that song and it, and it wasn't even initially something that i knew i was going to release either like i didn't know i didn't know where i was headed musically after that you know i hadn't talked to mark in a few months like my team like i hadn't talked to anybody i was isolated from everybody that i was working with so i didn't really know yeah but I'm glad I was able to finish it and release it and for it to be so impactful for many others that are going through it or, you know, so that people know that this happens so when they see it, they know. Separate exactly. yourself. Yeah. So. I mean, something that you're actually raising as well is kind of awareness to like generational curses. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, because like, like it's just it's something that, that it just, it's a circle. You know, if it happened back in the day, it's happening to you. You just look at the normality. Oh, yeah, I'm going to work it out. I'm a, I'm a tough woman, I'm a ride or die. But at the end of the day, it's just like, it's not even about, that's about you. It's about yeah. your your mental health, you know? Exactly. And and speaking about that, like, you know, even the people who actually abuse people, man, like, is they're fucked up. Honestly, you know and, I mean? and that's something that I, you know, learned too. Because, like, as much as I want to hate this person, I can't find it in me to. Because although I am a victim of, you know, abuse, like, physical abuse and all of that, He's a victim of his own childhood traumas. He's a victim of mental illness as well. And that's somebody that unfortunately is choosing not to get help, you know? But that's something that I had to understand too. And I don't know, I guess in a sense, like I learned to forgive him for that because it's like, you're a victim of something as well. I just wish that you would do something about it to change for the better, you know? 100%, it's, it's funny because um, I was having this conversation with a, with a friend of mine earlier, and we were definitely talking about um, the fact that we're all fucked up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some way, somehow, everybody grew up in a crazy, in a situation that they didn't think was um, the, proper, the proper way to grow up, right. you know? And um, as a man, you know, I, I completely understand that if you don't love yourself as a man, how could you love someone else? And vice versa. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it, it gets deep and I understand the fact that you had to forgive him in order to move on. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. How and tough is that though? Yeah. To forgive? Yeah, man. It was very hard for me to do that, you know, but I don't know. I feel like over time I got to know him a lot more. I got to 
like after I left, I got to know her more through, you know, mutual friends and family. So it gave me time, again, because I removed myself from the situation, it gave me time to really digest everything that was going on. Because when I was in it, when I was in the abuse, it's like, yeah, I felt bad. I felt hurt, you know, but I had to put it under the rug. I was like, I'm going to save these emotions for later. I didn't process what I was going through, you know? Mm -hmm. I was like in survival mode. And, you know, coming back here, sometimes I feel like I'm still in survival mode because, I don't know, it, like I still get triggered by little things, but... You're traumatized. Right? Yeah. But, you know, just in being outside of the situation, it gave me time to really see things and understand it from a different point of view. No, it is not okay. Like, I don't, no matter how you slice it, it doesn't justify anything, you know? Everybody has to take it upon themselves to, you know, take accountability and do something about that, to change for the better. Especially if this is a constant behavior mm -hmm. that you've had over the years. Like, come on, yo. Like, but, you know, forgiving him did help me heal. And it helped me stay positive, I guess. I mean, no, no, I, I wanted to say that that music video, like, as far as the acting in that, Joan, I mean, I don't know if he was acting or if you had to go into that space, but the the wild thing is me and my sister, we just finished, we were just watching, like, Euphoria, and then, <laughs> I, I know, love you, I know, Euphoria. I know, and then when we went to your video, she's like, bro, it's like another episode. I That's what like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, for sure. I mean, honestly, I give it to uh, my creative director, video guy, photographer, everything, visuals, uh, Super P. Super he P. did an amazing job at, Shout you know, being able to capture, because um, that was literally a night that actually happened. So he was able to recreate it and just he gave bring you the, it to the, life. The knife? Yeah, everything that you saw was real. <laughs> the only thing that wasn't real was... Um, the ending when I left. Mm -hmm. When that happened, I didn't leave. I still stayed. But for the sake of the video and getting that message across, like I wanted to put that there because eventually I did leave. Yeah. But um, yeah. Shout out to Super P. And actually, the day that I wrote, don't forget to mention in the car, was the same day that he reached out to me because I and he didn't know anything about. He didn't know I went to Texas. He didn't know I was in a relationship. He didn't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, What's up? <laughs> And he saw me on IG Live, and he was like, hey, like, let's shoot. And I'm like, all right, fine, or whatever. But the first day that I went with him to to shoot, he just knew there was something wrong with me. Like, he could see it in, in my body language and in my face. And, you know, when we were shooting, he was able to capture my emotion through pictures. And I was just like, I felt for once, like, all right, somebody sees me. You know, somebody, like, somebody that had no idea what was going on, somebody sees me because... When I was down there, I felt like nobody saw me. Like nobody knew, nobody tried to help me, nothing, you know? So it was nice, so shout out to Super P, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Super P just been back. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but you definitely deserve an Emmy for that video because it, was, it you. was fire, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You, I could tell you definitely had to go to a space to get into that mode, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's crazy too because, and I thought it was just so weird, but you know, you know how like actors like get into that sad mode and they have to think about something that makes them sad, right? Mm -hmm. It was so weird for me how I had to think about all the good moments that I had with this person. Like all the good memories and I thought that was weird that that made me cry. And then after I shot the video, I realized I was like, that made me cry because I believed in what that could have been, right. the potential. Mm -hmm. and. Unfortunately, like a lot of us believe and hang on to things yeah. because we believe in their potential mm -hmm. more than the actual reality of how they are. Mm -hmm. So yes, we fall in love with people's potential. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that happens a lot. Um, I was gonna say that um, the the whole project, right? So I, I listened to the whole project. It's all fire. Thank you. It's all fire from beginning to end. I had to listen to it twice. Nice. It was it was every single song I had to listen to it twice. I listened to the whole project and I listened to it again. You know, um didn't skip a didn't skip a track. What was all the music created when you got back or did you have songs already done out there when you brought it back? Cuz I noticed you had like some Texas flavor going on in there too. Mm -hmm. So tracks 1 through 6 I wrote before I moved. 
what the Omni Hotel, the one where you hear the Texas flavor in it. So I wrote that after the first time I came from Texas. I went to Texas July 31st for a festival out there that I got booked for. Um, shout out Smooth Vega uh, for booking me. And that's when I met this person. And so when I came back and I was, you know, in conversation with Mark about moving to Texas, transitioning into a whole different market, you know, Mark is just like an amazing super producer. And he was like, I think if you're gonna, you know, leave DC and move into a whole new culture, a whole new space, you should include that into your music, you know? And so adding those little pieces of Texas, like drinking my cup, and you hear that in my lyrics, but you also hear it in the, and the beat as well mm -hmm. it's like it's just it's transitioning for you from like i'm a dc baby but this is where i'm going you yeah, know what i'm yeah, saying yeah. so so i definitely wrote track one through six before i moved um the last the second to last talk to you later which was initially the outro yeah. um that ending wasn't there at first like all the the extra audio yeah 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 <laughs> and even hey, y'all about to ask you about that too <laughs> that like was that there. a real voicemail that was those were real voicemails real everything that was said and the way that it was said was real but i had somebody redo it True. um but even tatiana j she's on talk to you later she wasn't initially on it it was just me and i was actually gonna have someone so be on it right but that didn't happen and i'm so, glad you did i know yeah thank you my best yeah and so when i came back and I was like, okay, if I'm going to tell my story, I'm going to tell it right. I'm going to tell it from beginning to end, yeah. you know. And so for Talk To You Later, I knew that I had to somehow transition it into Don't Forget To Mention. Because I'm not just going to randomly throw Don't Forget To Mention in there, you know. Yeah. And so that's when I finished off Talk To You Later, added Talk To You on it, and, you know, added the the little rabbit hole. Yeah, I mean, I heard bacon to... flavor in it. I, I, <laughs> I, if my ears are serving me correctly, I heard a little bit of, like, webby. You know, type of vibes in there. <laughs> listen, I listen to music. I love music. That's so, what you yeah, I heard the vibes, man. It, it was definitely rocking. Mm -hmm. um, I, honestly, too, I wanted to ask you some more questions about like animes, mm -hmm. right? I don't know too much about animes personally. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if, if, I know a lot of people know you, but I know there's a lot of other people that still right. trying to get to know you. Right. So, you know, where does animes come from? Where does she start? You know, I'm where are you from? Start. Uh, well, I'm born and raised in Washington, D.C. My parents are from Peru. And honestly, I've been in the music game since I was a baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shoot, the first time I laid down with her, you was like, what, 14 or so? Ripping the mic on us. I'm like, who is that? <laughs> we were young enough then. I'm like, yo, she got better flow than anybody in this stage right now, yo. Yeah. Um, she went by a different name. I forgot to mention yeah. that. All, all, all good. <laughs> But um, no, nah, I started writing music since I could write, you know, and I would, you know, I would watch that show Full House and that was my favorite show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and right. Uncle Jesse was the musical. musician. Yeah. 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 And so there would be some episodes where he would be writing a song and he would be structuring it out like bridge, verse, hook. And so I'm like, OK. And then I would go to my room and I would do the same thing. Like just, I don't know, it just felt natural to me. You know, and so I continued writing poems and writing songs. And then it wasn't until like I was 15 and I met, uh, I had MySpace back then True. and the MySpace music thing. And I met Alchemist. I don't know if you okay. know Alchemist. Yes. So I met him and this guy named Yako and they took interest in me and my music and they wanted to work with me. So and they lived all the way like a bump up VA. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> um, I ended up going out there and recorded for the very first time and you know, Alchemist was the one that taught me how to record and to even like perform in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Like he would teach me harmonies. He would make me do take after take after take to get it right. You know, but honestly, that is why I am the way that I am now when it comes to my music. I take it very serious when I'm in the booth and I'm recording and I'm writing because it's like you got to get it right until you get it right. You got to practice, practice, practice because he taught that in me. You know, mm -hmm. he was also the person that taught me how to record myself. So now I record myself. So it's right. very like I'm very hands on when it comes to my music. Nice. Um, but yeah, I've been uh, I've been grinding ever since. I I I think it was like around I was 18 or something when I met Logic. Mm -hmm. This is when he was still in Maryland. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you know he was cool, and it was 
was I was doing like a bunch of remixes on YouTube. That's what I started to do. I used to just do little remixes and freestyles. Yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't stop. I had I knew what I wanted and I had a vision and I went out for it. I would literally like make a list. By next year, I'm gonna be known across the US. Yes, yes. And it happened. It actually happened. Logic posted my video to 93 Till Infinity. I did a remix to it. Word. And he posted it on all social media platforms and it went viral. And ever since then, I just, I got picked up by an independent label out of Texas. So I have some history out of Texas. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's like, it's like home. I'm about but, to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but ever since then, I've just, been, I've just been at it. And I've learned so much over the years. I've learned a lot about the business as well. You know, because there's music, yeah. and then music there's the business. music business. Yeah. And nobody and teaches you music business. Exactly. Yeah. You've got to learn that shit on your own sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, I've learned so much from it. Obviously, like, a lot of people did me wrong when it came to contracts and, you know, things like that. Um, but you learn from it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm very big on paying it forward. So when I see talent... I want to give back. I have so much knowledge, you know, and I feel like there's not enough power players in this area as well. But it's like there's so much talent. They just don't know how, yeah. you know, so I try my best to give back and, you know, knowledge and give time and energy to them as well. Because one thing that I learned is if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will either. 100%. And um, honestly, that's what got me through and got me dope as fuck now my pen game crazy yeah. you know because i used to be black i used to be black potential but I, I i lived up to my potential so yeah because yeah, like <laughs> every record i've ever heard you i mean put out and especially the past like three four years they fire man like the lyrics is just ridiculous and most of them no no bullshit man like they kind of like party records right oh yeah and like i said like don't forget to mention it's just like she just waved the way all like yeah. the drapes and everything just went right through, which is dope. But um, it's just like, yeah, man, like it's kind of surprising me though when I see stuff about you as an like, up and coming. I'm like, what the fuck you mean up and know, coming? Like, like it's just like whole time it's just like, but it's it's not just that because maybe for like the world is up and coming or maybe oh, the United yeah. States, oh, but yeah. whole time is just like locally, you a motherfucking legend, man. Thank let's keep you. it let's keep it a buck man like there's many people that look up to you you know what i mean there's other artists too that that look up to you there's other artists you've taken under your wing and, and kind of mentored as well that are that are that are doing things as well you know what i mean but at the end of the day it's just like you have a particular ear you have a team with ears too you know what i mean yeah, so it's yeah. just like what's up next for you you know like what's up next because i remember before you did that for houston Okay. Let's keep it a buck. You you use them, man. I got pop 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 lined up flow. You know, once I get pop 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 rolling, I got the interview with y'all. And it's just like pop pop, Texas. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like like get the fuck, man. Turn. And so 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 what's up with what's up with uh you know? Well, what are you so doing? back then I was already I already had plans of relocating. Yeah. So right now you know I'm pushing the EP talk to you later. It just dropped. You can find it on all streaming services. Apple Music. You need to stop playing with me. But um. <laughs> You know, just promoting that. You know, right now I'm working on a bunch of features as well. You know, and that's looking pretty good. Um, but I'm just getting ready to start doing a lot more traveling um, shows as well. And eventually, I I am gonna relocate again. I'm just I have two two places in mind, but we'll see. Depending. As long as you keep coming back to base. Oh no, I'm always coming back home. <laughs> like I love it here. I got family here. You know, like. That's something that's a thing for me to just to bridge that gap, you know, like again, like I said, there's just I still believe in this area. There's so much talent here and I'm not a stingy ass bitch. So hey, that's what's up, man. You gotta go bring some back. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, sometimes, you know, so like the biggest opportunities outside of here, which is, is true. You know, but at the end of the day, like the talent here is ridiculous. Yeah, there's so, a lot. There's a lot. You've actually discovered some folks too, man. That you know. Yeah. That, Thank you. Yeah, man. So it's just like big kudos, man. You no, never sure. like you're right. You never kept it stingy. You always about sharing the wealth and sharing the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that's something that out here, that it's shit don't ever come for free. At all, yo, that shit is is rare as fuck. You know, and yeah. you know it's hard for me not just as an artist but also as a female artist. You know, just coming up like. Yeah. You know, I had I did I wasn't given a lot of opportunities, so I had to create a lot of opportunities for myself. Mm -hmm. But it's just when I see other talent come into the scene, it's like, you know what? Like, still work your ass off, but I'm gonna help you out, and I'm gonna like you're gonna benefit off of everything that I had to go through mm -hmm. for you to shine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 
you kind of paved the road for a lot of artists. Got to. You know what I mean? Especially you being a female, it's like twice as hard, you know? Twice as, like, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I hope to see you collaborate with like more women in the area. Oh, I love to sure. see women collaborating with women. I feel like there's not enough of that in the whole music industry. Mm -hmm. In the whole music industry. I feel mm -hmm. like there's not enough of that. And when they see women that do kind of like the same things, they kind of like want to put them, you know, like like they fighting roosters or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, that's another reason why I also had Tatiana J on Talk to You Later because she's an amazing singer, mm -hmm. and she, you know, she's 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 I think she's only eighteen, I think eighteen, eighteen, nineteen. But I met her when she was fourteen, wow. and I used to do a lot of songwriting for her, and we would have her in the booth, and we would just develop her over the years, and you know, to see that she took the time to perfect her craft when it came to writing and that's something that i applaud because there's not enough women writers yeah. you know yeah. and you know over the years she would send me her music and every time it would get better and better and better and it got to a point where it's like wow you remind me of myself like i would work my ass off when it came to pushing my pen you know yeah. and yeah. she was doing that and i was like i fuck with you i want you on this song like yeah. and it was just great you know and um you know, there's even in my video, don't forget to mention, there's a, a couple of artists in there. Mm -hmm. Chrissy P, uh, Janaira was in there as well. They both do music. And uh, I'm definitely planning on doing songs with them too, just because I fuck with the consistency. I fuck with talent, you know? So, and yeah, work ethic. That's true. I saw and work ethic. With you. Those right. girls got some work ethic. You know, big shout out to Chrissy do. P, you know what I mean? They do. Yeah, they got some work ethic. Like, them. When you say stuff like, you know, it's, it's harder for a female in the music industry, it's just, I don't think people have an understanding of it. Mm -hmm. Because, personally, I've actually played your record for, you know, some folks, you know, some A&Rs and some friends and stuff, like, you know, and they didn't know about you, right? right. They're like, oh man, she's fucking dope as shit, she's dope as shit. But then they hit the superficial shit. Mm. Like, I'm gonna be a buck with you, man, they hit the superficial shit, oh, she's talented. Oh, she needs this. Oh, mm -hmm. she needs that. Mm -hmm. If she did this, oh, she fucking. Oh yeah, I've had. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that though? Motherfucking conversations, like. Because now we got like a Corduroy stick, but she got talent. You know, you like. Somebody like <laughs> I'm not gonna say his name, but he a rapper from here. Lord. I'm not gonna say his name, but yeah. nah, I've received shit like that. You know where they would tell me, you know, if you just got your titties done and your butt done, like oh, you'll be out of here, and I'm just like. That's hella fucked up to say. You laughed it off you, and you smacked it. Uh, well, <laughs> well, I talk my shit. I talk back. So, you know, I put motherfuckers in their place real quick. Yeah, you gonna you get out the race. Literally. <laughs> but, um, but nah, like, and, and even when this one rapper said that to me, my response was, well, why aren't you up? Why are you out of here? Mm. You know Come what I'm saying? Man. Like, you Come don't man. have mm. nothing to say. Clap it's back like, on a thousand. Like, <laughs> I think the real problem is marketing. The real problem is, you know, not about who you know, but how you know them. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's about. It's about a team as well. Finding the right alphas in their own, you know, right, in their own role. Because a lot of people also don't understand their roles. Yeah. A lot of people want to be in the front. It's like... What you, how you got to look at it is like you're in the front in what you do. You know what I'm saying? But people, a lot of people don't think like that. And unfortunately, that's why a lot of us artists go out instead of staying here yes. because there's not a lot of that here. Yes, that, and, their mind is too close. Yeah. yeah, and I overstayed my welcome here. You know, I, yeah. I stayed here very long because I believed in potential. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the age of transparency. <laughs> there, there's so many amazing... Uh, female rappers right now. I look at Chica, uh, Lizzo, mm -hmm. um, shoot, Missy Elliott to me is the best female rapper ever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know they like Nicki Minaj. One of the producers too, one of the best producers ever. One of the too, best yeah. producers ever and singers. You know what I'm saying? And you be singing like hell too. Thank you. Like I heard you in them songs, man. You was Thank killing it. You. I was like, she's singing like this? <laughs> You ever thought about dropping a whole song just singing on? Um, I have a few, like yeah, in the cut. In yeah, the cut. I I just believe everything is about timing, so mm -hmm. it's coming. Mm -hmm. It's coming. That's fire. Yeah, that's real fire, yo. My goodness. Um, let me ask you this. So, going back to um to dropping um new music, like what what's gonna be your next video? My next video. Yeah. My next, 
I mean, I guess I'll share it with you guys. <laughs> so the next video that we're gonna be dropping is to Omni Hotel. Omni Hotel, I love that song. That one, That's yeah. Fire. That one's definitely a favorite. Yeah. That one and Way to Go. Way to Go is dope too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All, all the songs are like non-skippable. I like that. Appreciate you know what I'm saying? It. I'm going through each one like, damn. <laughs> damn. Damn, okay. All right, all right. So, Thank yeah, you. yeah, super fire, super fire. Yeah, man, big shout out to Mark Henry on that one, man. Yes, I know sir, he has yes, something sir. to do with the lining yes, up, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, too, <laughs> other than the mastermind over here at Amaze, yo. Yeah. Yo, speaking about timing, it's about that time. Drop the links. Where can they follow you? What's up? You can follow me absolutely everywhere, all social media platforms. That's Anna with two N's, M-V-Z-E. Google me, stream my shit, follow me on Spotify, TikTok. I'm iTunes. Like on TikTok. iTunes, like, yes. get on it. YouTube. You know, they're going to plug it in here. Yes. Right there, right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> Go comment, man, subscribe. <laughs> Follow me as well, Henry Flo, F L O underscore D C F. And you can follow me, Rick Diesel, on Instagram. You can see the name right there. Yeah, man. And yo, thank you for tuning in to this episode of the new experiment, Animes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for making me cry. Oh. Maybe it was needed. You gotta cry once a week. Like, I mean, it's, it's good for the heart. It's good for the soul. You know what I mean? Water, water the flowers. <laughs> Telling that story right there. Yeah, that was expected. You know, yeah. we, we were expecting that later, but I know right away. Yeah, right yeah. Into it, but, yeah, we, had to, we had to get it done. Yo, <laughs> yo, we out. Take care. Bye.